And the first date function I want to go over is the days 360 function. And it calculates in between two dates, the number of days between the two. It assumes that every month is 30 days. So beginning with this start date and the end date, which by the way, it doesn't include the actual end date, but the day before the end date. So I put April 1st, but it's going to look at the day before that to do the calculation. So let's go ahead and look at this by typing in equals days. And there we go. It's days 360. So arrow down to select it. And it says it returns the number of days between two dates based on a 360 day year, 12 30 day months. So if you want a nice rounded number, you don't want to deal with extra days like in February, if there's a leap year, then go ahead and use this with it highlighted, hit the tab key to pop open the function. And you can see in the syntax, the first argument is to choose the start date. That's in bold. The start date is up here for quarter one. Select it. Hit comma on the keyboard. The next argument is the end date. Go ahead and select that. Then hit comma. And then finally the method. You can use US or European. If you don't choose one, the default is US, which is what we're going to do here. So I'll hit the backspace key and not even go to that last argument and hit enter and there's 90 days. Now it should be at least 91 because I know February had 29 days this year. In any case, it assumes every month is 30 days. And then if you want a percentage of that, go ahead and hit equals, select the cell and divide it by not 365 because remember it's 30 days each month. So 360 days out of the year instead of 365 because 30 times 12, well, there you go, 360 hit enter and you get 25%. Now, if you don't get a percentage, then you want to go ahead and select this and come up here on the Home tab to the Number group and select Percentage. And then you can come down here, select both cells, because I want to copy and paste the function and formula over to the right by hovering over the bottom right-hand corner until I can see the black cross, the autofill handle, then click and drag it over, let go, and cool, there we go. Now, if you want to get more particular, like you're working with a 365 day, you want to know exactly how many days between these two months for quarter one. Then let's come down here and do equals year, and it's the year frac that we're looking at. Arrow down to select it, and it says returns the year fraction representing the number of whole days between the start and end date. So with it highlighted, hit the tab key to pop it open. What's the start date? Well, it's right up here, comma, the end date, right below it comma, and then you get the option if you want, you can actually do the 360, which we did for the days 360, but we want to do something different. We want to actually get specific with a total of 365 days out of the year. So double click on that, then go ahead and hit enter. And there you go. And if you want to convert that to a percentage, go ahead and select it, come up here on the home tab to the number group and click percentage. And there we go. It's 25%. Now let's go ahead and calculate the number of days that elapse, the actual number of days. So to do that, let's go ahead and click in this cell, type in equals, and take that cell and multiply it by the total number of days that we're calculating throughout the year, which is the actual 365, and hit enter. There we go. That one day accounts for February, 29 days instead of 28. So we can go ahead and select both cells, then hover over the bottom right-hand corner, get the black cross, click and drag over to the right, let go, and the percentage is pretty much going to be the same. I mean, if you really want to get particular because it's just a nudge up from one day, quarter two, to the second day in quarter three, you could go ahead and select these cells and convert it back to a number. Click on the drop down arrow and select general. And then you get really particular because that's 0.2520 as opposed to 0.24. In any case, you get the idea. Let's go ahead and hit undo to go back to our clean 25% look. If you also want to do simple math between two dates, let's come down here type in equals and let's say from the start date we want to take that and subtract it from the end date and hit enter and it's a total of 91 days. Now why is it a negative 91? I'll show you. Let's come up here and select the dates and come up and convert it to a general number and you'll notice now this was the start date right? That's 42,370 and this is 42,461. The earlier dates or the further back you go the smaller the number gets. So if you take a small number and subtract it from a larger number, you're going to get a negative. So we don't want to do that, do we? Let's go ahead and hit undo and instead come down here and fix it and say equals the larger number or the number that's closest to us, the date that's closest to us, and subtract it from an earlier date, which is going to be a smaller number, and hit enter. And there we go. We get a positive number. 
Now you can go ahead and select the dates and convert it to a general number, or you can use the date function, which will return the serial number for the date entered. So to do that, if I come over here, let's say, and type in equals, and say, what was the number for this again? I don't want to convert it. And D-A-T-E, and there we go, returns a number that represents the date Microsoft Excel date time code. So with it highlighted, hit the tab key to pop it open, and then you can go ahead and type in the year. Let's just type in this right here, January 1st, 2016. So 2016, comma, the month, which is going to be the first month, comma, which is going to be the first day. Hit enter. Okay, it returned the date, but we'd have to convert it from the format date and click on the drop down arrow and do general. And then we get the same number. As like we did, we came up here and selected, well, not that cell, but the range, and converted it to a general number. It's the same thing. So if you want to leave your dates alone, but you want to find out what the number is to help you with other functions and formulas, then you can go ahead and use the date function to see what Excel sees as a serial number. Let me go ahead and delete that. How about another one? Let's say that we want to find out how many days it would be from this date right here. We can say equals, select the cell that contains the date, hit plus, and then type in 20 days from that cell's date, hit enter. Hey, it works out. January 21st, after 20 days, is when we complete, let's say, our project. Now let's do some other functions. Let me go ahead and delete this. And come over here, and let's say that you want to know today's date. Type in equals, today, and you can see it says returns the current date formatted as a date. Hit the tab key to pop open the function. There's not much to it, just hit enter, and that's today's date. Now if you want today's date and the time, then type in equals now. Returns the current date and time formatted as a date and time. With it highlighted, hit the tab key to pop it open, hit enter. Because we can't see the date and time, it's too small of a column. Then come up here and hover to the right of the column that the pound symbols are in. Until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions between the two column headers, E and F. And then click and drag to stretch it open. And then we can view the contents of the cell. Now any time after you insert the now function, you type in something or make changes throughout the worksheet. Notice that cell, that when I come up here, watch it, when I hit the delete key, it updates. So it's always going to inject whenever you do any changes within your workbook to today's date and time. And when you close out of the workbook and open it back up, when it's tomorrow, it'll update this to August the 12th, August the 12th, and the current time whenever we open it up at that time. And notice that the time is military time. So when you get to noon and you go over to 1, instead of from 12 to 1 or 1 p.m., it goes 13, 2 is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, to right now it's 7 o'clock, 19. Next is another fun little function, and it's the weekday. If you want to find out what day of the week the start date is for January 1st of 2016, you can't remember if it was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's come over here and type in equals and use the week weekday. You can see in the pop-up, returns a number from 1 to 7, identifying the day of the week of a date. So with that highlighted, hit the tab key to pop open the function. It says type in the serial number, which we could use the date function to convert a date into a serial number, but don't worry about that. It'll actually see the serial number that this date is based upon, but behind the scenes. So go ahead and select the cell that contains the date. Hit comma to go to the next argument, and it says, okay, we got numbers 1 through 7. How do you want this to figure out? Do you want the first number to start with Sunday, or do you want number 1 to be Monday, or 0 to be Monday? The easiest for me is Sunday is the first day of the week, so if I go ahead and double-click on that, and hit enter, it gives me a value of 6. Now, Sunday's the first day, Monday's the second day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then the sixth day would be Friday. So if you want to find out the day of the week, you can go ahead and use the weekday function. Next is the network days here, and it will return the work days between two work dates. So let's go ahead and type in equals net work days. You can see with it highlighted, returns the number of whole work days between two dates. So that means if I want to find out the work days, the working days, Monday through Friday, doesn't include Saturday or Sundays because those are non-working days, then go ahead with it highlighted, hit the tab key to pop open the function, select your start date, comma, and then you can see down below the second argument, the end date, select it, and then if you want, if there's holidays, you see the last argument there? Well, let me go ahead and just finish this up without holidays and see what it looks like. Hit enter. 
it says there's a total of 66 working days from the start date, January, and just right up until April 1st. Now we've got holidays. We have January 1st, and we also have another holiday. Maybe it's a company holiday. Maybe it's President's Day. Whatever it is, you can include those days in this function by double-clicking on it. And then going just before the parentheses, the close parentheses, hit comma so we can open up the holidays here. And then go ahead and select your holidays. So if I click and drag and select the range G4 through G5 and hit enter, instead of 66 days, we cut it down by two holidays that we have down to 64. Pretty sweet. And then down below that, we have the workday function that I want to show you. And this one's going to return the project's finish date after you give it a start date and type in the number of days. So if you don't know the end date, but you know how many days it's going to take to complete the project, and you want to start on January 1st, then type in equals work day. And you can see here returns the serial number of the date before or after a specified number of work days. Again, we're talking working days, not non-working days, which would be Saturday and Sunday. So with it highlighted, hit the tab key to pop open the function. Where's the start date? Let's say we start January 1st, comma, and then how many days? Let's say it's going to take 20 days. And then do we have any holidays? Well, let's hit enter first. And you can see that with the working days, Monday through Friday, not Saturday and Sunday, for 20 days beginning January 1st, we're going to finish on January the 29th. Now if we include the holidays, double click and go just before the closing parentheses after the second argument, hit comma on the keyboard so we can define the holidays and then come over here and select the range. And instead of January 29th that it was going to finish, if we include the holidays and hit enter, it's not going to be until February the 1st. And then finally, let me go to the second worksheet. You can calculate the number of years somebody's been employed. And the formula that I'm going to be using, let me go ahead and click in the first cell for Max Klinger. He started on January 22nd, 1998. I want to hit equals, open parentheses, and I want to go with the current date, which we can use today's function to bring the current date today. And you can see it returns the current date. We just talked about it. So with that highlighted, hit the tab key to pop it open. And then you can see it's got closed parentheses. So close it and then subtract that from an earlier date, which is going to be a smaller number. As we talked about, earlier dates get smaller as far as the number that Excel assigns to it, the serial number. And so the earlier date is going to be over here, the higher date. And then go ahead and close the parentheses because after we do that, then we need to divide it by the 365 days to get our years. Then go ahead and hit enter, and he worked approximately just a little over 18 years. And if you don't like the extra numbers there, go ahead and select it. Come up here on the Home tab to the Number Group, and click on Decrease Decimal until you get something that you're okie dokie with. And then hover over the bottom right-hand corner, get the black cross, double-click really fast. And it looks like, whoa, this guy's been here 44 years. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.